Hello, I'm Lloyd Albritton, and thanks for stopping by and visiting with me here on my YouTube channel, uh, Lloyd's Commentaries and Stories. Um, while you're here, I hope you'll also go ahead and check out some of my uh, other uh, other YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Lloyd and Friends: Interesting Conversations with Interesting People. I have quite a few interviews with a lot of uh, local interesting people, not famous people, but uh, but interesting. I hope you'll check out those as well. Uh, also, uh, before we get into today's uh, uh, commentary, uh, let me just call your attention to the share button below. If you will, uh, if you'll, if you if you enjoy this, uh, share it with your friends. Just hit the share button, and just if you if you just think about it, if you shared it with just two people, and and they shared it with two people each, and they shared it with two people each. You know, it's kind of like the magic of uh, compounding. <laughs> That's how rich people get richer, you know, by compounding interest. And so if you'll do that, uh, every now and then it'll go out to enough people that every now and then maybe somebody will uh, will uh, enjoy my commentaries, it'll maybe share my wavelength of thinking, and uh, I, can get a, I can get a new fan. Uh, don't forget to like me, you know, down below, check like because, uh, you know, people who do, this, who do this kind of stuff, like me, you know, we're usually very uh, uh, in, insecure about ourselves, you know. Uh, we, we like to be liked. You know, it just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy when somebody likes me. So check that like button. Just let me know that you've been there. And if you want to make a comment, feel free. You know, uh, whether it's good or bad, you know, if you don't like me, tell me why. And if you do, tell me why. And I always enjoy getting your getting your comments. And then lastly, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I don't have very many subscribers, uh, but, uh, you know, I've got 45, 50 or so who've subscribed. If you subscribe, if, if you like what I'm doing here and, and you subscribe, uh, then when I post a new one on, on here, uh, you'll get a notification. And you can, you can go and check it out at your own convenience. <clears throat> and that's it. That's it on the housekeeping part. Now, this week's commentary uh, is an, I've entitled it, uh, I Don't Get It. <laughs> I don't get it. There's a lot of things I don't get. Now, first, uh, well, there's some things I do get. It's sort of like uh, what Carl Childers said in, that, in the movie Slang Blade. He said, uh, about reading the Bible, he says, there's a great deal I, I don't understand, but then there's a great deal I do understand. So there's some things I get and there's some things I don't get. One of the things I do get pretty good is uh, is uh, jokes and humor, funny stories. I, I love to laugh and I love to hear funny stories. I lived in New York for a few years and uh, one of the things I enjoyed about living up there is they have a lot of these uh, stand-up comedy clubs and I used to enjoy going to those and, and watching stand-up comedy. But you know, there's a lot of people who, who don't get it. You know, they just do not have a sense of humor at all. Now, I want to tell you, just give you an example. I want to tell you a funny story. Now, this is about one of the funniest stories I know. All right, and, and uh, I'll tell it to you, then we'll go on. Uh, there's a story about this fellow that um, I saw an ad in the paper, in the newspaper. It said, uh, uh, for sale, a talking dog, $5. So <clears throat> he was, uh, you know, he, he was a little dubious about it, but out of curiosity, he went and checked the ad out. So he went to see the man, and he said, uh, I understand you have a talking dog. And the man said, yes, yes, I do. And, um, you know, $5, yeah, $5, $5, and he's yours. So the man said, well, do you mind if I, uh, do you mind if I talk to the dog? You know, just to make sure he can talk. He said, no, no, not, not at all. He said, uh, he's out here in the backyard. Just come on through the house, and uh, you, can, you can talk to him. So he goes through the house and goes out to the backyard, and sure enough, there's a big old dog laying out there in the yard, big old German Shepherd dog, old dog. And so the man walks up to the dog, and he says, uh, uh, good morning. He says, how you doing? And to his great surprise, the dog turns around and looks up at him and says, I'm doing good. He says, how you doing? <laughs> well, you know, the man went right on from there and engaged in a whole long conversation with the dog. You know, the dog uh, went on to tell him how that he had had a, a whole working career with the CIA, 
The dog said, uh, yeah, that's right. He said, I worked with the CIA for many years. And uh, he said, uh, they put me undercover, uh, you know, with the, uh, these drug cartels. And, uh, you know, me being a dog and everything, they didn't know that I could talk. And so I was able to gather all this evidence on them. And later on, uh, you know, we went to court and I was, uh, you know, naturally I had to testify against them. And, and uh, you know, we were able to put a lot of those dangerous criminals uh, behind bars. And uh, the man said, well, what, are you still working with the CIA? And he said, uh, no, no. He said, I just, uh, nowadays, he said, I just lay around out here in the backyard, you know, and lick myself and scratch myself. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that's my life now. Well, the man walked back into the house with the other fellow, and he turned to him, and he said, uh, you know, that is about the most incredible thing I think I've ever seen. He said, but I don't understand. Why would you, why would you sell a dog like that for just $5? And the man looked at him and shook his head, and he said, well, sir, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm going to tell you the honest and goodness truth about that dog. He said, he ain't nothing but a big old liar. Why, he ain't never been out of that backyard. <laughs> Get it? Pretty funny, huh? Well, I can tell you that I've told that very joke to quite a few people. It's one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people that, that didn't laugh at it at all. Didn't laugh at it at all. In fact, didn't even snicker or anything. They just look at me and say, uh, duh, I don't get it. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know why some people have a sense of humor and some don't. Um, maybe you have to train yourself or be around it or something like that. But I do know that, you know, jokes and funny stories or having a sense of humor, <clears throat> that's not the only thing that people don't understand. And, uh, you know, it, it, maybe that's not even that important. But there are other things that people don't understand. I mean, like serious things, you know, like uh, 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 Bible scriptures, you know, or uh, uh, pro profound religious things or... Um, you know, scientific things or philosophical matters that people just don't understand. Now, I tell you, there's a lot I don't understand. I don't understand how how they uh, how they take a split in an atom to to an atomic bomb. <laughs> I never will understand that. Uh, I still don't understand how they get uh, images from. California down here into my TV to make movies. I don't understand how songwriters and singers, how they make this wonderful music, how they write music and make it. There's a great deal that I, that I do not understand. And I've often wondered why, you know, why couldn't I have some music in me? You know, how come, uh, how come I couldn't understand certain things? Now, um, uh, you know, We'll go to the Bible just a bit for, uh, for an example. Uh, one time, Jesus, in, uh, this is in the book of Matthew, for those of you who are Bible scholars, uh, Jesus' disciples uh, came to him and they said, Master, <clears throat> why do you always talk to the people in parables? And Jesus said, To you, to you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, to them, it is not given. He said, this is why I talk to them in parables. Because they don't, uh, seeing, they see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. So, you know, he's saying that, that some people aren't going to, some people aren't going to get it. Uh, you know, even if I told it straight up to them, they still wouldn't get it. So I talked to them in parables and, uh, you know, them that, them that are supposed to get it, get it. Them that are not supposed to get it, don't get it. So he said it's given to some and not given to others. Now, I had a friend one time, an old guy that I, that kind of mentored me when I was a, a young man. And <clears throat> I would ask him advice sometimes on complex things. And uh, like Jesus, <laughs> he would tell me a story. He'd always come back and he'd tell some little story. It might be a baseball story or something like that. It might be a little short one or it might be a long story. But he'd tell me a little story and then he'd finish with his story and then he'd kind of look up in the air and, uh, you know, kind of uh, muse for a moment about it and maybe chuckle. <laughs> 
And then, you know, he'd walk away and leave me. And he'd leave me standing there wondering, what the heck did he just say? What's he trying to tell me? And sometimes it would take me <clears throat> uh, two, uh, two or three days. Sometimes it would take weeks, even months, before I could ever understand what he was saying. I'd just shake my head and say, I don't know what the heck he was, uh, what that story meant. So I would have to go and study it out. I'd continue to study it. I'd lay in the bed and think about it. I'd walk down the road and I'd be thinking about what he said. What the heck did he say? Then one day, suddenly, it would come to me. The light would come on in my head and that thing that I was asking him about would suddenly come on like a bright light, like catching the punchline in a joke and I'd I, I would understand it. And then I would understand the story that he told, and it would be very clear. I don't know why I didn't get it to start with, right? But <clears throat> now, he was a wise old man, and he knew that. He knew I wasn't going to get that story real easy, that I was going to have to do a little work on my own, you know, to do it. Now, I've studied the parables of Jesus as well. I've read a lot of them, and, you know, the uh, uh, same way. I'd have to read them over and over again. And I continue to read those parables. I continue to go back and read them. And sometimes I get different things out of them. And next time I get something different out of them. But understanding didn't come easy. You know, I would have to like, uh, in order to get understanding, you know, I would have to study and, and, and pray about these things and ponder them and, you know, talk to somebody else about them and, and so forth. And so, uh, I didn't really get an understanding until I was willing to put in the work and do those things. You know? Now, I'm, uh, I'm reminded, I'm doing a little reading in the Old Testament right now about some of the, uh, when, they, when Israel went over into uh, uh, the Promised Land, over into Canaan, and, uh, you know, Moses died, and then Joshua took over, and Joshua was, uh, Joshua and, and uh, Eleazar, the, the high priest, who'd taken over from his father Aaron, <clears throat> they divided up all the lands and they gave different tribes different lands. And uh, one of the tribes, they, they came to uh, Joshua and the leader of the tribe, he said, uh, you know, Joshua, uh, you only, how come you just only gave us like one little, one little lot? He said, uh, it, it's not big enough. And Joshua said, well, I, I gave you, I mean, it looks pretty big to me. He said, you got the, the mountains, you got all that timber up there in the mountains. Why don't you go cut some of that down and build? Oh, he said, you, but you don't understand. He said, uh, uh, up there in that area, those uh, Perizzites, I recall, uh, they're big. They're big and mean. They got, they got uh, 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 iron chariots. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you gave it to us. God gave us this land, but he didn't just give it to us. We had to go take it. And that's what Joshua told this man. He said, look, I've given it to you. God has given it to you. He's told you it's yours. You know, you got to go run them off. You, you've got to go fight those Canaanites and throw them out and take it. All right. I didn't just give it to you so you could just come over and possess it. But, you know, you'll win. If you go fight them, you'll win. Right? But you've got to do something. And so there's a lot of, uh, of things like that that we don't get that we have to actually uh, do something. Now, I don't mean just study and, and pray about it and work at it to get an answer, but sometimes we have to actually uh, practice a matter. Right? You've got to, I mean, actually do it. Now, let's see, I'm thinking of another scripture here. Uh, John, this is in 1 John uh, 2 and 3. John says of Jesus Christ, he says, <clears throat> Hereby ye do know that you know him if you keep his commandments. This is how you know that you know him. Now, you can preach about Jesus. You can talk about Jesus. You can pray to Jesus. And you can say you know him. But here's how you really know him. You do what he says. You do it. You keep you know, you keep his commandments. That's how you know something. That's another way that you can know something is to practice it. Now, I took, uh, you know, when I was in my 40s, uh, you know, I found myself traveling around on business and so forth, and, and uh, I would go off to these cities, to these trade shows, and I would find out that 
uh, hey, I couldn't find anybody uh, during the daytime, and I discovered that they were all out playing golf. You know, uh, my my com my competitors were out on the golf course getting the deals, getting the business, and here I was back at the hotel waiting for the evening trade show. So I says, uh, hey, I got to learn to play golf. You know, I'm I'm missing, I'm losing business here. So I took lessons. Oh, I took lessons. I took lessons in uh, out in. Uh, uh, Colorado. I took lessons down in Texas when I lived down there. Then I moved up to New York and I took more lessons on chipping and putting and, you know, swinging the club and all that. And it came time for me to go out the first time. And I had bought me a whole new set of golf clubs, these King Co. My son-in-law sold them to me. They were top of the line. I had these uh, great golf clubs and, boy, I had me a nice uh, golf polo shirt and them two-tone black and white shoes and a and a nice cap, man. And and they had told me, they said, now Lord, when you carry your clubs, you don't carry them like you'd sling a rifle. You carry them under your arm. If you try to carry them the other way, people will know that you don't know anything about golf. So I was carrying my clubs the right way, and I went out there, and it came my time to get up there and swing and and tee off, and the ball just went out yonder way in the woods. <coughs> And that was pretty typical of my swing. One of my buddies said after, he said, you know, Lloyd, when you came out here, we were all intimidated. Because, man, you had all that gear. You was looking good. You had us all intimidated until we saw you swing the club for the first time. <laughs> then we knew that you weren't a very good golfer. I never did become a good golfer. I finally, I finally sold those golf clubs and just gave it up because all it did was just make me angry all the time because uh, I couldn't understand why couldn't understand. I didn't get it. I couldn't understand why I couldn't just hit a ball sitting on the ground. But anyway, I gave it up. I never could apply. You know, I could talk about golf and you might think if you didn't know much about it, you might think I knew what I was talking about, you know, or I could watch it on TV and kind of enjoy it. Oh, look at yonder. Look what he did there. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a pretty good swing right there. And it would sound like I knew what I was doing, but you know what? I never did learn how to apply the principles. And so I still don't understand how Tiger Wood hits all those balls the way he does, right? So uh, that's a quest. You know, maybe if I'd have kept on playing, I'd have got better. And, but some things you don't really understand uh, until you do them. Now, it's hard, for example, for, a, um, uh, uh, for an old stingy gut to understand the principle of charity, for example, and benevolence and generosity. It's hard for him to understand how he could, <coughs> he could be healthy, wealthy, and wise by giving stuff away to the poor. Seems more likely if he just hoarded everything and held on to it, he would be better off. But, you know... It just doesn't work out that way. The only way you can really understand that principle is by doing it. You got to stretch a little bit, okay? Just exercise just a little particle of, of faith to try and do something and see how it works out. Well, you say, well, if I do this thing, it could turn out to be some kind of a of cult thing, and you know, I might get caught up caught up in it, and they want me to do drugs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe so, but here's how you know. If you do something, you know, the, the Bible says a good tree will not produce bad fruit and a bad tree will not produce good fruit. So if you do something and it don't work out, you know, if it doesn't make you healthy, wealthy, and wise, if it doesn't make you, you know, improve you in some way, then you know it's bad and you can abandon it. But if you do it and it's good, then you can continue that and your life will improve from it. But you got to do it. You know, there's lots of things like that. The principle, for example, of tithing. Uh, you know, a lot of people believe in tithing. Some people don't believe in it. But uh, if you try to tell a man who's struggling, uh, you know, he works hard every day. He's trying to keep a roof over his head, buy groceries, buy clothes for the kids, send them to school and all that. Payday by payday. <clears throat> and you say, now, you know what? If you'd pay your tithes and offerings to the Lord, he would bless you and you'd be better off. You'd be healthier, wealthier, and wiser if you do that. Well, <clears throat> it's hard for him to understand that. 
There's only really one way for a man to understand the principle of tithing, that's to do it. That's to give it a try. Give it a try and see. Because there's a lots of people out there, Christians, good Christians, who do believe in it and who, who practice it and do it, who can testify that, hey, it works. I can't figure it out. It's kind of like that little bit of meal, you know, when Elijah come across the widow woman and he said, make me a little cake and, uh, so I can eat it because I'm really hungry here. And she said, all I have is just this little bit of meal. He said, that's all right. You make me a cake and that meal will do you fine. And she made him that little cake and she fed the prophet Elijah. She fed him and that little meal just kept on producing. It just kept on producing and, and she was able, able to survive. Go figure, right? But sometimes you've got to do things in order to really get it, to understand it. Now, there's one final thing I want to say about this. Even with all that's said and done, even if you, even if you study it out and ponder it and think about it, and, and even if you practice it, there's really one ultimate way, which is really the only way that you can know something. Now, to come to that, I want to tell you this, just this one more Bible story, okay? One time, uh, Jesus asked Peter, he said, Peter, who are all the people saying that I am? Who do they believe that I am? And Peter said, oh, uh, they're saying different things. Some of them say you're Elias. Some of them think you're Elijah. Others say you might be Moses, come back from the dead. He said, well, Peter, who do you think I am? And Peter said, oh, you know, without, without missing a beat, he said, thou art Christ." the son of a living God. And Jesus looked at him and he said, blessed art thou, Peter. I think he called him uh, Barjona or something, Peter. He said, blessed art thou, Peter. But flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. <clears throat> you didn't learn this from man. This was a spiritual gift. You know, going back to what Jesus said that it is given to some to see and it is not given to others, right? So after all is said and done, after we study it out and practice it and do all these things, if you want it bad enough, for, but ultimately before you can really have it, God through the power of the Holy Ghost gives it to you and then you just know. And that's how you really know. That's how you get it. This is Lord Albritton. Thanks for listening.